Hi YouTube and welcome back to my channel. When you move to a new country, you have to adapt to a new language, you have to adapt to new social norms, but you also have to adapt to a million little itty bitty things that you never thought you'd have to. And adapting to all these little itty bitty things can lead to some really laughable and embarrassing moments. Right now, I'm going to share with you guys my most embarrassing moments in Italy. And they happened because I am a strania. Doors. Let me tell you guys, Italian doors are different than American doors. Didn't think they would be. You guys, this is an Italian key. See, look how long it is. Look how fancy it is. These are little knobs. This is another type of Italian key, still quite a little bit bigger than the standard American key. Okay, this is an American key. Mm -hmm. Just a bit different. This is an American doorknob. And here are some examples of Italian doorknobs. This is an American door. And here's an example of an Italian door. Now, <laughs> I remember when I was in Fano, the second week I had moved to Italy, and what had happened was I needed to go to the post office and Nada needed to go someplace else. I was staying with Nada, my partner from the Italian exchange. I don't know if you guys remember, but back in the beginning of my channel, she was there. So I was staying at her house and I had to go to the post office and she had to go someplace else. I was supposed to be coming home a little bit before her. So she had given me the keys to her house and told me to just let myself in when I got home. So I went, did all the stuff I needed to do, and I got home to Nada's house. And you guys, I was moving Nada's key around in her door and I could not open the door. Usually in America, you move the key once or twice to the right to unlock it or lock it. And then you move it once or twice in the other direction to unlock it. You guys, I couldn't do it. I was moving it left, moving it right. The more I moved it, the, it did, it, the door would not open. And then the freaking doorknob wasn't a real doorknob. It was just this fixed thing on her door. And like I'm pushing and trying to get in and moving it and nothing was working, you guys. And I was there for a good 15 minutes trying to get out into her house until so finally I just sat there on the ledge looking all sad and homeless. And I can only imagine what the passersby were thinking. Who is this random black girl trying to get into this house? Finally, Nada shows up and she takes the key from me and she moves it. I think it was, it was like three um, clicks to the whichever way I wasn't doing it. And then she like pushed the door a certain way to open it. And I was like, that is so complicated. And in every Italian house that I've had so far, in every Italian house I've been in, it's usually like that. Like you can move the key anywhere from one to four clicks. And sometimes you have to maneuver the doorknob in a certain way to get the door to open. And you would never think that you would have tr troubles like opening a door in the new country. And now Enrico always makes fun of me for that. He's like, wow, Tia, you can't even use doors. You can't even open a window. Because it, the same thing is with windows too. We have like these simple push up, push down windows. Sometimes they're open closed, but in Italy, they're like always open closed. And you have to move the handle either this way to lock it, this way to open it this way, and this way to open it this way and it's like so complicated always so complicated embarrassing moment number two came at my first trip to an Italian grocery store it was my first week living in Milan alone now so I wasn't in Fano Enrico and Nadal weren't around with me I was all by myself in Milan and I wanted to go check out the grocery store that I would need to be using for the next whatever how many years I would be living there and so I went to the grocery store I went in and I looked around didn't really want to get anything and then I needed to get out you guys in Italy when you're leaving a grocery store they have like little gates that you have to move go outside of or pass through the cashier register I didn't buy anything so I wasn't gonna pass through the cashier register and there was this one gate that allowed you to get out it said not an Ushita or something it said something about Ushita and I couldn't speak Italian back then I didn't know that Ushita meant exit and it said like don't exit or something like that it said not to use the gate and you guys I I didn't see anywhere else that I was supposed to go and I figured this gate would just open so I just like went through the gate and suddenly all these alarms started going off and everybody in this and it was a big Esalunga too everybody just started looking at me and I just stopped there and looked at them with my mouth open and it was like this really awkward moment for a second and then they turned off the alarm and then I just walked out and left but it was so embarrassing like the little things you would never how was I supposed to know that Ushita meant exit and I wasn't supposed to exit there uh. 
Riding a bike ended up being an unexpected challenge I would face in Italy. When you ride bikes in America, you usually just ride them around in your backyard and it's no big deal, or you ride them on a not so busy street. You don't you don't normally see people riding bikes in traffic here, okay? It's not really a normal thing. But in Italy, people use bikes to get around everywhere, and especially in Fano, like people rode their bikes on the sidewalks and with like people. So you had to maneuver through going through people and going through cars, and it was literally the scariest thing in my life. I was too afraid to ding the people, but if you don't ding the people, they won't move out of your way and you'll just run them over. There was a couple times where I was walking on the road and I heard the ding and I didn't register what the heck that could mean and I didn't move out of the way fast enough and somebody almost hit me with their bikes. Bikes in Italy are something I wasn't expecting and had to get used to. And it was kind of embarrassing because everybody's like, well, that's again, you don't know how to ride a bike. You don't know how to ride a bike. I know how to ride a bike. I just don't know how to ride a bike in Italy. There's a difference. Another embarrassing thing that happened to me, and I think this would happen to other Americans as well, is just language farts. Just learning the language and messing up your life that way. Because Ita in Italian, you can have one verb with an are, it means one thing, and then if you put an e ire, it means a completely another thing. Two words that I thought were so similar that actually aren't were um, scopare and scoprire, okay? Scoprire is a good word. The other one is a bad word. And so there would be so many times where I would want to say I discovered scoprire o scoperto, where I would say o scopato. And that's not good. That's not good. Why are they so similar? Why, why, why? So now I just avoid that word completely. I, have, I avoid saying scoprire. I mean, right now I would say trovare, trovare, o trovato, I found, I found out, o visto, I saw, um, sapevo, I knew, something like that, I will stay as far away from scoperto as possible because I don't know, when I'm speaking in Italian, trying to be fluent, trying to be fast, I can't tell when I just said scoperto and scopato. They're too close. And that happened with a million other different words, but that one was probably the most embarrassing because I'm pretty sure there was a time that I made that mistake in front of Enrico's parents. My life. I thought that this video could be funny or it could just make me look like an idiot, I'm not sure, but I wanted to show you guys just some of the little itty bitty things, <laughs> micro adjustments that you have to make that people never think about. Living in another country, you really have to change your entire mind mode of thinking and you have to get used to so many new things. But once you do get used to them, everything will be cool. I always get these compliments saying, oh, you've adjusted so well to Italy, you've assimilated so well to Italian culture, and it's true, I have, but not. it wasn't easy. It wasn't for lack of f***ing up quite a few times in the beginning. So I hope that you guys liked this video. I hope that you guys found that it was funny. And like and subscribe if you haven't already. I'll see you guys in my next one. Mm -hmm.